Well, I want to thank you for joining me today on Side by Side. We're going to begin a new series today. We're going to look at the book of Proverbs. And I have to say that I'm really excited about this, partly because I've never taken a, a, an approach to the whole of the book, looking at it systematically, and I'm really enjoying the preparation that it's been already happening. Much of what is said and what is, what is done everywhere in our world, you could hardly say it's wise. Often it's considered to be a, a smart thing or an advantage or even a success when we somebody manages to get something over on somebody else. They think that's a wise thing. And across the world, in catching the headlines, we hear voices claiming to be the answer, the solution to all sorts of problems, but sadly, some are only driven by their own gain and will later on be seen to be foolish. In the words of Proverbs 1st chapter 29 and 31, we read there, Since they hated knowledge, they did not choose to fear the Lord. They will eat the fruit of their schemes. So, why should we listen? Why should we take God seriously? And why should we listen carefully and slowly in every moment, not just at the big, as, the, as it were, the big events in our lives when we've got big decisions to make? Well, we hope to answer these questions in the coming days. God's wisdom is not hard to find. You don't need to book an appointment. You don't need a special education. It touches and reaches every age, young and middle age and older age. It is effective in every season of life and for every person. Because although the cultures may change and shift and society becomes different and develops, the human heart is exactly the same. So, what do we do? Where do we begin? This book of Proverbs is really Jesus speaking to us, giving us his wise counsel. Not that by achieving the counsel and following the counsel, we're going to make heaven by our own efforts. No, but this will be the wisdom we need for those who already know him as they journey home. Ray Ortland, a good friend and Bible teacher, has put it this way in one of his comments in the book. It is about grace for sinners. It is about hope for failures. It is about wisdom for idiots. This book is Jesus himself coming to us as our counsellor, as our sage, as our life coach. Every day, we are faced with making choices, even to ourselves, in our, as we talk over things within our own minds, whenever we hear pieces of news. Well, what, are, what are people to say? What are we to say? How are we to respond? How will we know what is appropriate in certain situations, especially since we seem to live among a generation who have opinions about everything, from world politics, health, and even us, I suppose you could say. Remember what the Bible says about Jesus. In Corinthians, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 1.30 and he says, Jesus is the very wisdom of God. And Jesus said of himself in Matthew 12 and 42, he said, There is someone greater, greater than Solomon here. Someone greater than Solomon. So these Proverbs, some of which are written by Solomon, guided by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is saying, well, I have greater wisdom still. Let me quote you again from Ray Ortland. He says, What if we have many advantages in our lives, but we do not have wisdom? If we have love, but not wisdom, we will harm people with the best of intentions. If we have courage, but not wisdom, we will blunder boldly. If we have truth, but not wisdom, we will make the gospel ugly to other people. If we have technology, but not wisdom, we will use the best communications ever invented to broadcast stupidity. If we have revival, but not wisdom, we will use the power of God to throw the church into reverse gear. Wisdom, true wisdom, is something that is really rare. 
Interesting. Just as I was preparing and thinking about this, I had a phone call from a kind person who wants me to join their uh, group, as it were. Not maybe join their group, but to follow their, their, their recommendations. The question was about abortion. And I have to say that I have every sympathy with uh, what they're trying to do. They would love to see abortions no longer being practised, not only here, but indeed everywhere. And that would be something that would be in keeping entirely with the Word of God. But when I think about it, I have to really consider, well now, it's not just that I agree with what your goal is, but do I agree with your methods? And of course, with the various comments and all the other things, I so I took time to read through, pray through. I'm not sure that it's the method is one I totally think is the wisest one. And so I may be considered all sorts of things because I might not follow that path. But this is the question, isn't it? These are the sorts of issues that are raised as we talk about what is the wise way to do something. In the world, the Bible says there's all sorts of wisdom. James in 3 verses 15 and 17 says he calls there's a wisdom that is earthly, unspiritual and even demonic. That makes you stop and think, doesn't it? I remember one time, way back, years ago when I was in, my, in a congregation, another congregation, there was a lovely young man who came to faith. He had quite a character, he was quite a character and his life was literally going 180 degrees in the opposite direction. And he had the opportunity in really going in a new direction to lease a little shop, kind of a corner shop. I was thrilled for him because I couldn't be more glad to see him starting to get a really, using his gifts and his abilities in, in, a, in a good little pro program, a little business. Not only that, he was going to add something to the community and he was going to be in contact with the community and he was brilliant with people. He asked me to come down and have a look at the shop and as we were standing there, the former owner or the person who had been leasing the business to him came in and he was giving him his advice. He was telling him how important it was that he should be doing this and that and the other and the things that he should sell. Among those things was cigarettes. Now, I have to say I smoked a long time in my life. I'm glad I don't now because I wouldn't want to have the health risks with it and all the other things and the wastefulness of my resources. But this man was saying, unless you sell cigarettes, you'll have no business here because people only come here for their cigarettes and then they buy the other things. It's as though the other things are kind of the spin-off. Well, my, my young friend sort of looked at me with a sort of a questioning look. We didn't say anything at the time, although I did hesitate and said, mm, I'm not so sure that I would do that. The other man was really offended, very offended. And he, he spoke up and he says, well, I'm just as good a Christian as you are and I've been selling them and what's wrong with that? Well, I said, I, it's not my business. I said, I'm just saying that I don't think I would like to sell anything to anyone that might actually harm them. That was the end of the discussion. I knew that my friend had gone off. He had something to think about and wrestle with. And for the first few weeks, he didn't sell cigarettes. People would come into the shop, some people, and they would say, oh, I'm cigarette. Oh, you have no cigarettes, and they would go off. And so it was always at this point, you know, oh, and he was really, really stressed. But he kept going a little while and eventually he gave in and he stopped the cigarettes. Some months later, he came to see me and we were chatting about it and business was going very, very badly. And I said, what's wrong? I said, oh, he said, the problem is, he said, that you see, cigarettes require so much money to buy. The profit is so little on them. The cash flow is all absorbed in keeping them. I can't keep it going. And he had to close. You see, the wisdom of the man before him didn't seem to work out as true as, 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 as he said, because the very thing that he said would be the success was its failure. Now, I'm not going to judge any of that, but I just use that as an illustration just to mention how what seems a wise thing to one person, when we step back and as we think about it, might actually not be wise at all. The wisdom of Proverbs is gospel wisdom. It's counterintuitive to our world. And as you and I will start to read it and think about it, I believe that God will really help us. He will give us new insights about present problems. And I think it'll be a blessing to you. So I hope you will join me. And if you have friends and you think it can be helpful to them, you can share it with them. 
But look, let's just get reading the book and let's just ask the Lord to help us all as a little community walking side by side to hear his voice and daily to be blessed and helped by him. Thank you again for joining me side by side. <music>